Welcome to the tiny town of Kashmir, Washington, located on the foothills of the Cascade Mountain Range in North Central Washington. And look, there's only about 2,000 or so people that live here, but if this town were measured by the amount of candy that it pumps out, Kali, it'd be one of the biggest cities in the country. Yeah, actually, we're gonna take you on a tour today of the Applets and Cotlets factory, one of my favorite treats ever. <laughs> Yeah, they have grown so much over the course of the last 100 years. They've been open now for over 100 years. All right, so come along on this tour and you'll get to see how they're made. And maybe learn a fun fact or two. I'm on top of the world, eh? I'm on top of the world, eh? You can follow me. Four large kettles on my left are double jacketed steam kettles and they work like a double boiler. In them goes sugar, water, cornstarch, fruit concentrate, and pectin to make our candy base. Once the candy has reached 235 degrees, which takes about 30 to 35 minutes, they test it with an instrument called a refractometer which measures the moisture content of the candy. If that's at the correct level, they bring over this mixing kettle here in the blue machinery, lower it to the ground using the pole on the back of the kettle, and then reel it over and tip the large kettle onto its side and pour the candy into the mixing kettle. This is where they add the nuts to the mixture, if it's a nutted candy. And they mix it in in that green mixer on top of the kettle there, keeps the candy stirring while they bring it over to the set of rollers that you see it above right now. They'll take a wooden tray off the cooling rack. You can see a bunch of empty ones over there in the corner of the room. They'll take a wooden tray and place it down on the rollers and cover it with a layer of plastic, which is coated in mineral oil so that the candy does not stick. And they pour the candy in using the spout on the end of the kettle. And the candy is weighed out by the scale that those rollers are sitting on top of. Each candy tray has about 24 pounds of candy in it, and each kettle makes about 11 trays of candy, so that's over 250 pounds of candy per kettle. So once the candy is uh, in the tray and the tray is full, they flatten out the candy inside, and then they cover it in another layer of plastic and label it with the flavor, the date, and the exact weight of the candy in the tray. Then they place the candy tray back onto one of those cooling racks, and once the cooling rack is full of candy, they push it over into the corner by the window, where it sits until all of the candy is room temperature. And from there, it goes into our cooler, where it sits for a minimum of 8 to 10 hours before it can be cut and packaged. You can see the cooler through the window on the wall, if you guys would like to take a look. That front room is where we keep our cold storage ingredients, and the room behind it is where they push all of the full candy trays, where they're waiting to be cut and packaged. How hard is it to work at a place like this and not eat candy 24 hours a day? I do eat the candy every now and then I'll take a sample. I'm a potential buyer too. Um, but it does, I mean, every now and then yeah. I'm like, okay, I've had enough. You know? so, yeah. yeah. But like, I do have like a freezer bowl. So. Yeah. Kind of like working at a pizza place, you know? Yeah. You, you gotta sample the product, right? I'm a potential buyer, so I've got to know the product in case anyone asks questions you about bet. it. Yes. So once the candy has cooled for at least 8 to 10 hours, they bring a cooling rack out here. They'll take a tray off of the cooling rack and remove the plastic from the top half of the candy. And then they put the candy onto the white table, if you see him, and he just pulled that one off of that. They remove the plastic from the other half of the candy, and once it's uncovered, they place it onto the conveyor belt, which is just the next step in on those white tables. And right now they're cutting sparklers, so you can see that he covered it in a granulated sugar. If they were cutting our regular candies, it was our uh, powdered sugar covered candies. They first cover it in a thick layer of cornstarch. The cornstarch would act as a moisture barrier between the candy and powdered sugar so that once the powdered sugar is added, it doesn't just soak right in and disappear. And it also keeps the blades of our cutter from sticking to the candy while it's cutting as well. The candy travels down that conveyor belt once it reaches the end, it reaches our guillotine cutter. So the blades travel up and down and chop the candy into 12 cubes at a time. Each candy slab is cut into approximately 732 pieces of candy, so that gives you an idea of how we do our mass production at this level. And once the candy is cut, it falls out into the white tumblers that you see at the end. In the first part of those tumblers is where with our powdered sugar candy, the excess corn starts to tumble off and fall out. But right now, they've covered up those flat 
so that the granulated sugar stays on the skin because it's never stay on. With our regular canvas, it would travel down the conveyor belt and go under those silver boxes, and that is where the powdered sugar would be added. Once the candy is coated in the sugar, it falls out into the white cups that they have waiting at the end. And in the first part, uh, and once one of those white cups is cold candy, they label it with the flavor that they cut and then bring it over and set it along our packing line to be packaged. So once the tray goes through this blue machine, that is where it gets covered with a layer of plastic, and then the plastic piece seals onto the box at the end. And so we go this final conveyor belt as well. So this final conveyor belt is where they'll check to make sure that each of the boxes is um, sealed into the plastic correctly, as well as making sure that the product number and the date that it was produced are being printed onto every few box correctly as well. If everything looks good, they load those boxes into a larger box and place that box onto the pallet. Once one of these pallets is full of candy or the order is filled, they bring it down to our cold storage unit, which is a few blocks down the street, and it's ready to be used in our retail store or shipped out to our buyers. Our candy has about a six-month shelf life, unrefrigerated, one year refrigerated, and two years frozen. So the colder you keep it, the longer it will last. We do recommend that if you freeze it, you thaw it out in the refrigerator first to keep a better consistency, but it does freeze well. And we also recommend that once you take this plastic seal off of the box, you seal it back into an airtight bag because you don't need preservatives, so it will start to dry out once that plastic is removed. There's a lot of people. How many people work uh, typically out of time to make all this happen? Yeah, so in our peak season, which I was explaining, is about mid-July through about November, December. Um, they can employ up to 160 people company-wide in the factory. That would be about 30 to 40 employees in the factory. How cool is that? I tell you what, they are really getting the job done. Personal favorite, I've got to go with, I got to go with the original applets and cutlets. Probably the applets, those were the first two that were made but now they've got all kinds of them they got candy covered yeah, ones and chocolate different. covered yeah. and i'm excited to try the northwest variety mm -hmm. that is where we are after all in the pacific northwest so yeah. anyway hope you enjoyed the tour we sure did mm -hmm. come visit it sometime here in little town of cashmere and uh you can take a tour for yourself and get your own free samples <laughs> how about that leave us a like subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on our next adventure bye